Fantastic. Thank you for being patient while I finished up my last couple of bites of lunch. Um, I'm Michelle Morris from Consolidated Planning Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about planning for college and the options that are available after college for families with special needs loved ones. Um, a few housekeeping items. We're in webinar mode, so that means that I cannot hear you or see you, but I know by the participant count that you're out there. So thank you for joining us. We are going to uh, send you a recording of this webinar and the slides later on today. If you're joining from our podcast, feel free to email us to get a copy of the slides if you would like those. There's a lot, lot of clickable links in this presentation, so the slides are very helpful. And our email address is contact at cpgcares.net. Uh, so feel free, please, to put any questions or co uh, comments in the chat box, and I will get to as many of those as I can. If I don't answer your question right away, please understand that um, I'm, I'm looking at the questions, but maybe I'm about to get to that or, or something, or I'll just work it into what I'm saying for you. Again, if you have any questions or comments, put those in the chat box. Um, so who is Consolidated Planning Group and why should you listen to us? Well, we are a financial planning firm located in Sugarland, but we focus mainly on families that have special needs loved ones. Almost all of our clients and the owner of our company have children with some sort of intellectual or developmental disability. Uh, so we help families understand that side of the coin when it comes to saving for the future. Now, um, we are also members of the Special Needs Planning Academy, and we are Social Security Advisors, nationally certified. Um, so we know what we're talking about. We're based just outside of Houston, but we serve all of Texas and, as a matter of fact, several other states in the United States as well. Please, if you wouldn't mind, let me know in the chat box if my slides are switching or not. We sh we're on the next slide now. We're going to talk about reasons that families come to us is for uh, developing a protection plan for your family when you're gone, for your income. Um, you know, how are you going to take care of your family after you're gone? Lifetime care plans for your loved one. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like you want to save for your retirement and your spouse's retirement, but what about taking care of your loved one? That's kind of like a third bucket of money that you need to save, uh, almost as big as another retirement fund. We help with transition planning, and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. ABLE accounts, and of course, advocacy. Like I said, since the owner of our company has two daughters who have some disabilities, we really focus on advocating and educating for families because it's so complicated. There's so much to unravel and so much that you need to know. We're trying to get the information out there to everyone so that you have an easier time of going through all of this than our founder, Allison, did. All right. So again, nobody has let me know yet in the chat box if my slides are moving. I would appreciate it if I could have at least that little assurance. <laughs> because I didn't have anyone to check with me before this webinar started. But um, so today we're going to be talking about educational options after high school. And like I said, there are a ton of clickable links that um, you will be able to uh, receive in the slides when we send them out later on today. Thank you so much, Kim, for letting me know that my slides are moving. I really appreciate that. Okay, so... The first thing, as we're heading into thinking about what's going to happen after high school, is that we would like for you to have and keep realistic expectations for your child. You know, everybody shares their stories, uh, but 
they share the best parts of their stories, like on Facebook or social media, media, or you're talking to your neighbors and, oh, my son just got ex accepted to this college or whatever it might be. All kids are different and you don't have to compare your child. You shouldn't compare your child to anybody else's child because everything happens at a different pace. You know, I like to compare it to my favorite food, which is uh, popcorn and I cook it on the stove. Uh, so you put, you know, you put the oil in the pan, you put the kernels in the pan and as they begin to pop, you know, there's always a couple that pop really early and then a lull. And then a lot of them pop, not but not all at once. And then there's a few that pop later and some that never pop at all, even though all of those kernels are in the exact same hot oil at the exact same temperature in the same pan, they all pop at a different time. And so I like to use that analogy to think of children and as they learn and as they grow, they're going to pop at different times and that's okay. So keep an open mind and think about all of the options that are available. It doesn't have to be that your child's path is straight to a four-year college and they move away to school. It could be a transition program where they help teach your child kind of how to be more independent, how to go away to college, how to advocate for themselves. It could be a trade school or community college. They can get their feet wet that way. It could be a full-on university degree program, but there's also programs that might just provide a certificate or a license. Uh, you might go to a traditional college, but just take a reduced course load, take one or two classes and see how that works out. Uh, maybe it's better for your child to live at home instead of living on campus. There are organizations that can help with that whole living on campus thing, and we'll, we'll get into some of those, but there are ways to make it work. Uh, also, the Texas Workforce Commission, their VR program, which we're going to talk about again later, um, they can help your child find a great job and keep that job and, and learn how to be job ready. Uh, there, there's different career paths, different work settings. And with kids like ours, we need to think about, you know, if your child is one who really does not like to sit still for long periods of time, does not like to just keep quiet for long periods of time, they would rather be up and active and moving around, maybe a job in a cubicle at an office would not be the best fit for them. So that's things that we can help them think through when they're considering what they want to do if you know, if working is available to them. Um, there are even registered apprenticeships through the Department of Labor. So that link is there for you. And Project Search can help you find other programs that might be a good fit for your student. So check those all out. Um, so there was a study done by Goldberg that found that there are six traits that students really need to succeed. And this goes for all students, but especially our kiddos, you know. Uh, first of all, self-awareness. Kids need to know about themselves. They need to know their strengths and their challenges, what they excel at, what they love, but even what their diagnoses are. Um, one thing that the founder of our company likes to say is that she began to practice this at a young age with her daughter, even as they were going, you know, maybe they're in the car going to a doctor's appointment and she would ask, okay, well now when you get there, when we get to the doctor's office, I would like for you to tell them, uh, give them an update, tell them what your diagnosis is, tell them how you're feeling you do the talking and coach her through it on the way to the office. And then by the time they get to the office, of course, her daughter is still going to be a little bit nervous, but showing her, you know, that you have to be aware of what you're going through and what you're feeling and what you are dealing with, um, both academically and not being proactive. Um, that's very important. You know, when kids are in 
elementary, middle, and high school, a lot more resources tend to come to them. They don't have to be very proactive because the teachers are watching out for them, hopefully. Parents are there day in and out helping. Um, and the resources kind of come to you. Once you go away to college, you have to do a little bit more work to seek those things out, to find what you need and to, to be you know, vocal and to help yourself to those, um, those resources. Perseverance, um, you know, teaching your child that, yes, you have to go out and find these resources. And maybe the first time you try to make an appointment with your advisor, maybe you won't get an appointment or maybe they won't answer your email right away or, or who knows what the case could be. You have to persevere. You have to take on that challenge and not let it get you down, not let it just make you give up and not try again. And the same thing with classes, you know, um, it's not necessarily going to be easy. They need to have that drive within themselves, or they have to be told or taught to have that perseverance, to keep pushing, keep working on it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it eventually if you just keep working at it. Goal setting, you know, chunking tasks into smaller portions so they can get things done, setting goals and, and you know, scheduling what they need to do. All of these things are things that you can be guiding them through to get them used to it throughout high school. Um, being aware of and using effective support systems. So there are some great support systems. The, the uh, college's office of disability, groups at the school, you know, different clubs and organizations are available, you know, and, and students need to not only be aware of those, but sometimes the, the trouble is getting your child to actually use <laughs> that support system. You know, there is a, an office where they can help advise you and you need to actually use it. <laughs> or there is a group for students who uh, also have a disability, use it. And, and staying away from support systems that are not very effective or not giving them the right kind of support as well. And then, of course, teaching your, your child some emotional coping strategies. Things are going to get tough from time to time. I mean, as we go out into the world as adults, it does, it gets tough for all of us from time to time. What uh, coping strategies does your child have to deal with that kind of stuff? How do they get through a super stressful or emotional moment? Um, for me, <laughs> and this is kind of silly, but I went ahead and bought myself one of those adult coloring books. I mean, it's not like dirty adult. It's just more complicated. I don't have it here with me, but um, a coloring book. And I bought a really big package of like 150 different colored, colored pencils so that I can color in my coloring book when I just get far too overwhelmed or I just need to zone out for a while. I can grab my book and color and come back refreshed. So it, it might seem silly even for an adult to do those kinds of things, but everybody needs their coping strategies. And it's way better if it's not something that's harmful to us. Um, so, you know, like I was saying, when you're in elementary, middle and high school, the accommodations kind of come to you, you know, your parents, your teachers, your um, school counselors help you figure all of that stuff out. Uh, when you go away to college, you can still have accommodations, but they don't just transfer over for you. Um, you want to definitely keep in, cons consider the different schools, you know, that you're looking at, what their offices of disability are like. Uh, call, do your research, find out, and ask things like, you know, what is the, how, how big is the staff at the Office of Disability? What programs do they have to help your child? How involved are they 
on a daily basis? Do they just sit in their office? Are they out on campus grounds? What are they doing? Um, not all schools have a great office of disability. Uh, when it comes to the SAT or ACT, AP exams, even college courses and graduate level exams, you can have accommodations. You just need to check early with the companies that provide those tests, like um, Praxis is one of them. Uh, the College Board is another one. Um, I forget who does AP exams, but you can call those companies or check on their websites and see what they offer in terms of accommodations and um, what they need as you know, proof that you need an accommodation. So think about what your child might need to be able to do those things and why they need those things. And um, you know, they might want updated testing if you haven't had your child tested like their IQ test and things like that in the past three to five years. Um, so get some updated testing, but really they, they can help. They can give extended time, uh, things like that. Another thing to consider is that if you think that these tests are just going to be far too overwhelming, um, you know, community colleges for the most part and trade schools don't require an SAT or ACT um, score to apply. So you don't have, you can save yourself that trauma <laughs> of going through those hard tests, save your child the trauma if you're considering a community college. Um, so another thing to think about when your child goes away to college or goes into college, whatever, is having a power of attorney on file. There's a, a general power of attorney and a medical power of attorney and having a FERPA on file with the school. These are all things that will protect you and allow you to talk to various people regarding your adult child. Now, my son is uh, 21. He went away to college in Chicago. And, uh, you know, it's kind of scary because even though he's an adult legally, he's still my baby. <laughs> and I still worry about him so much. And it this reminded me that, you know, if something were to happen to him um, and I needed to contact, you know, if, if he were in an accident and he went to the hospital, we have a power of attorney and a healthcare power of attorney so that the doctors will be hopefully willing to talk to me. People will be willing to talk to me. Uh, a FERPA is what the school needs to be able to talk to the parent about things like grades and um, scheduling and financial aid and things like that. So the FERPA is for the school and then the power of attorney and healthcare power of attorney are more for, um, you know, if, if the child is in heaven forbid an accident or something like that. Now, when it comes to going to work, because some of your kids are not going to go to college, they're going to go to work. Um, a a workplace is required to provide reasonable accommodations as long as they don't uh, cause an undue hardship to the workplace. Now, that can be interpreted so many different ways. So for guidance on what is considered an undue hardship and what workplaces must do for um, anyone with a dis disability, you can check the Department of Labor website and the Job Accommodation Network. Those are two very helpful links um, when it comes to workplace accommodations. I see that some more people have joined. So I'm going to say again, please make sure that you put any questions or comments you have in the chat box. And I'm going to let you know that we are sending you these slides and a copy um, of the video later on today so that you can click through all of these links and um, be able to see the video again. If you have questions, you can refer back to it. So after high school, if your child is looking for something to do educationally or you're looking for something for them, we have several slides of some great programs that are available throughout the state of Texas. Now, 
we don't work for any of these colleges. They don't work for us. They don't sponsor us in any way. These are just great programs that we've heard of. Um, the VAST Community College program here in H at HCC, the ACHIEVE program. You're going to want to look into these, look at the schools you're interested in and what their programs are. Um, we have worked long and hard hours to try to make sure that each one of these links works <laughs> and goes to the right spot, but things change often. So if you find a link that does not work, please let us know so that we can fix it for the future. Um, but again, these are just some great programs that are geared towards students who have some kind of intellectual or developmental disability. Think College. So this is a great website for you to check out. It features over 300 uh, colleges all across the United States that offer post-secondary education programs for students, specifically for students with intellectual disabilities. So you can go onto this database and search by location, type of school, um, options for living on campus, things like that, and see all of the programs that are available out there. Uh, this is thinkcollege.net. It's a great resource. Another resource that we can provide to you is Jody Glau. She is, uh, her company is called Custom College Consulting. And what she does is she helps students figure out the best college or university for them. What's going to be their best fit and, and finding a school with a great um, department of disability or great resources for students or the right programs or kind of all of the above. She can take all of your criteria for what would be the best school and help you figure out what schools match that, that search. Uh, so her contact information is here for you. She is an independent educational consultant. Again, we don't work for them. They don't work for us, but these are some good programs. The College Living Experience. Um, this is a program that can give you your student guidance and instruction as it relates to academics and career development, independent living skills, and even social development. Um, so it can help. And this is an in um, a residential program, you know, you live at the college living experience and they teach you these things. So it's really great. Um, you can check that out at experiencecle.com. All right, I don't see any questions yet, so I'm gonna keep plowing ahead. Bloom Consulting is another group that we, we know of in the community. They have a program called Campus Connections, where they can set up your student with kind of a mentor on the college level. And this person, uh, this connections coach can be online, virtual or in person and provide support to help uh, mentor, guide and give navigational support to your student. It really helps empower students. And those, those traits that we talked about before, like speaking up for themselves, problem solving, um, self-advocacy, it really helps with those kinds of, um, of traits and helping students understand those things. Now, the Bloom Consulting Campus Connections Program, the cost for that is $1,000 a month. So that is, you know, out of pocket. But you could ask your VR counselor if you're working with the VR program um, about helping sponsor some of that if it's in line with their plan for your child. Well, your plan along with the VR program. Uh, so anyway, Bloom Consulting, their con contact information is there as well. So I've mentioned these people a couple of times, the Texas Workforce Solutions, Texas Workforce Commission. Um, they really have a wonderful program set up. So this begins at age 14. You can get your child involved with them. 
Um, and it goes, it's from age 14 to age 22. They do training and education. They provide scholarships and they help your student figure out um, what do they want to do? Is this a career that they can make money at? Is this a career that people are still hiring for? Um, what do you want to study? How are you going to pay for it? Where do you want to go to study this? All of those kinds of things. And um, so contact information is here. We have Anna in Houston and Deborah in North Central Texas. And then you can also check out the link student navigators um, to see what might be available in your area, who the, who the contact person is. So there should be a coordinator, a VR coordinator at your child's high school that they can talk to. Um, if not, you can, you know, you can go here to the VR lookup, you can email, you can call, they, they are not shy. Sometimes they do get a little behind and that's totally normal and that's fine. Stick with it because this program is certainly worth it. Um, they, like I said, learning what's hot and what's not in the job market, um, helping find paid and unpaid scholarships, touring websites, job shadowing, things like that. Um, Post-secondary education counseling. So helping with uh, financial aid, college enrollment, work readiness. And this is huge. I love this part of their program is that they help your student learn how to be like a good worker, a good, you know, a team player, a problem solver, an effective communicator, how to manage their time and then their money that they're going to make, how to get to work. Um, understanding their rights and responsibilities related to their disabilities, and when to ask for help and accommodations. Um, their pre-employment training services or transition services, they even do testing uh, for your child to find out what are the impediments to work for your child, and how can they help train for those challenges, you know, um, if it's communicating and not knowing when to ask for help, they can help identify that. Um, if it's, you know, your child needs to learn more about this subject, they can help pay for college courses. If it's, um, you know, your child really needs uh, that program that we talked about through Bloom Consulting, they really need a mentor to help them stay on task and get through college maybe they can help pay for that as well. So this is a really great program. And like I said, it starts at age 14, helping young adults, well, 14 is a very young adult, but helping them get geared towards finding some kind of an employment opportunity. All right, what about funding? How are we gonna pay for all of this stuff? Yeah, Michelle, these seem like great programs if we win the lottery. Well, you know, college is always expensive, but there are ways to save and to prepare. Of course, the FAFSA, do definitely fill out your FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's really not as difficult as people make it sound. I've done it. It's a little bit of a pain, but really it doesn't take that long and it's not that hard. And even if you think that oh, they're not going to give me any federal funding. You need to fill it out anyway. And here's why. The schools use this uh, FAFSA for scholarship information. So if your child has a possibility of getting a scholarship, they're going to have to have a FAFSA. So you might as well do it. <clears throat> this application opens every year on October 1st and you fill it out and then when you apply to schools, they'll look at it. Um, even if you think that your child is not going to go to college, I would say that it would be a good idea to fill this out. It's free. Um, there's no you know, obligation. And if your child changes their mind, or if you decide that maybe you do want them in a program, you don't want it to be too late and, and you don't have this filled out and then you're out of luck. So just go ahead and fill it out as close to October 1st as you possibly can. 
scholarships. Now, we're about to share five pages of scholarships with you. Um, but think about your community. Maybe there's a scholarship there. Maybe there's an opportunity through the high school or the college, whichever school your child is looking at attending. Um, maybe there's a scholarship, and there are so many scholarships that are based on the disability or the diagnosis that your child has. Uh, maybe it's sports related or music or band or foreign language club or any other organization that your child might be involved in. There are scholarship opportunities everywhere. So look into those. Take your time, research those early. Um, it might even be helpful for you to keep a notebook or a spreadsheet, you know, however you, you like to keep track of important information. Write down or make note of what scholarships you're interested in, which ones you've applied for, what their deadlines are, maybe what their requirements are, when you have sent things in, all of that kind of stuff, just to help keep you on track and make sure that you don't miss anything important. And, and focus on larger scholarships, you know, especially if they make it difficult. Like if you have a, a scholarship that's going to give you 500 bucks and they want an essay and a transcript and a history of, of volunteer work and three recommendations and they want all this stuff. My goodness, 500 bucks might pay for one or two books. Is it worth going through all those hoops and hurdles for that where you can spend that same amount of time applying for a $10,000 or $20,000 scholarship, focus on the bigger ones. Have your kids write several different essays, work with them on those, and you know, use them as needed on these different scholarship applications. Another place that you can save money uh, and help fund your child's education is with a 529 college savings plan. There's also an ABLE account. We're going to talk a lot about the ABLE account coming up because it's a, another great program. So hold your questions on that one for a moment. And then vocational rehab through the Texas Workforce Commission, as, as we've already talked about, they can help provide funding for your student if the classes are in line with the goals established in their plan, uh, within the plan for your student. Okay, still no questions. So we're going to go into ABLE accounts. And um, so you might have heard of that, that 529 college savings account. That's a 529C. The ABLE account is a 529A. It's kind of this, it's the same tax code, um, just a different section of it. So with an ABLE account, the beneficiary is the account owner. So your child is actually the account owner. They can only have one ABLE account, but anyone can put money into it. So if you have relatives who want to help out or, or whatever, they can put money in, but each kid gets one account. Um, the income that is earned in the account is not taxable. So that's great. You put the money in, they invest those funds, and it earns interest. Uh, so that's really nice. When you contribute money, unfortunately, on your federal taxes, those contributions are not tax deductible. Now, some states do allow for a state income tax deduction if you put money into the ABLE account. However, since we live in Texas and there is no state income tax, you're not going to find that in Texas. <laughs> the ABLE account is a place where you can hold money for your child, where it will not jeopardize their SSI or Medicaid or any other uh, government benefits. So that's, that's fantastic. There are contributions and distribution limits though, to be aware of. Um, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna get there. So as of 2022, January, there were 49 different ABLE accounts set up or plans set up nationwide. And you do not have to use the plan for the state that you live in. So uh, you can open an ABLE account 
anywhere, any of the programs. And you kind of want to look at each state specific program and see which one fits your needs the best. Maybe just Google best state ABLE accounts uh, to, to get a feel and then go from there. But you know, not all of them have the same options in terms of investing. Um, some of them, it's a little bit more difficult to open the account. Um, some of them maintenance fees are, are a little higher than others. Things like that that you want to look out for. So your child has to have or, or enable to have an ABLE account the person has to have a disability that started before they were 26 years old. Um, contributions, like I said, anybody can put money in, but there are limits to how much you can and should put in your ABLE account. So the first limit that you need to know is $17,000 for 2023. Whatever the gift tax annual exclusion is for whatever year, that's the amount you're going to be able to put into an ABLE account for that year. Now, you can put in $17,000 for 2023. You can also put in an additional $13,590 if your child is working. But you never want your ABLE account funds to go over a total of $100,000. Otherwise, that would disqualify your child for their SSI benefits. Um, distributions for qualified expenses are not taxable. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about a penalty when you take your distributions. Uh, you can change the investment strategies on your account twice a year. You can roll it over to another family member as long as they meet all the criteria. You can also roll over from a 529 college savings account to a 529 ABLE account if you need to do that. Um, now, one thing to remember about your ABLE account is that when your um, loved one passes away, Medicaid can come back to the ABLE account and claim reimbursement on some of that money. Um, it's kind of like they're saying, you know, we've provided these benefits to you all your life, and now we're coming back. This is one place where we can kind of come back and get some of that money back that we've paid over to you. Um, and additional funds can be distributed to the beneficiaries or rolled over to another eligible family member. Um, one way that it might be good to deal with this situation is to make sure that the money in your ABLE account actually gets used. So how can you use that money in an ABLE account? Uh, this is great news is that you can use the money in your ABLE account for almost anything. Anything that, and this is what ABLE, ABLE stands for anything that achieves a better life experience for an individual with a disability that began before age 26. Um, so, and there are some things that you would find like in your special needs trust, you shouldn't pay for certain things, but those things can be paid for with your ABLE account. Whereas with your ABLE account, there are limits on how much you can put in. And with the special needs trust, there are no limits of how much you can put in. So these two things work very, very well together because you can use them differently. Uh, there's of course a lot of overlap, but you can use them differently. You can fund them differently. It, it's great. So you can use your ABLE account for daily living expenses, health and wellness things, housing, financial management, transportation, education. Um, and this is what's different from the ABLE versus the 529 college savings plan. Because if you have that college savings plan, that's what the money can be used for. It's college, you know, maybe room and board, books, things like that. But if you're not sure that your child is going to go to college, you can put that money into an ABLE account instead, which can be used for college but also can be used for 
almost anything else that makes their life better. That includes computers, tuition, uh, room and board, maybe even a vacation, uh, all of those things. All right, so scholarships. I mentioned that we're gonna give you a ton of scholarships. So the first one uh, that I wanna talk about, and I'll talk about some of these and others, I'm just gonna let you take over on those. But um, the State College Tuition Waiver is a program that gives um, a scholarship to anyone, any child that was adopted through the state system or has par been part of foster care. So that's the first link there. If your child, if you've adopted, if they're, um, they were a foster, a foster child, any of those things, check out that link. The next thing by the pink arrow is, you know, find out from the specialists in your child's life. I mean, you've got this team, use them. So at Texas Children's and Baylor and Methodist and all of those different hospitals, are there scholarships that they know of through there? Um, there's a list here of scholarship searches that you can check out that they just, you know, congregate, congregate the data for you. I know that's not the right word, but I can't think of the right word, but they get all gather all that data for you and you can go search their databases for scholarships as well. Um, the Terry scholarship. This is one that um, our company owner, Allison, one of her daughters actually got one of these Terry, Terry scholarships. It pays for a full ride to one of these Texas colleges that are listed. You can apply for it at every one of those colleges. So let's say you apply at Texas Tech and you get it. You apply at AM, you don't get it. You apply at UT Arlington, you get it. You choose which school you want to go to. Another thing that many, many people don't, I don't think they would think about this, but let's say that you apply for a Terry scholarship at one of these schools and it's not necessarily the top school that you would want to go to on this list. Once you get accepted and you spend one year at the school you don't love, you can transfer to any of the other schools on the list and still have it paid for. Um, the Terry Scholar candidates have to have leadership potential, character, decent grades, uh, and financial need. You know, maybe your child isn't in band or they have, they're not sporty. They haven't done anything like that. Um, but what they can do is volunteer. And we're talking about meaningful volunteer work here, not just once or twice I volunteered at the church I always go to anyway. This is, I set time aside and volunteered regularly at whatever place, whatever is near and dear to your child's heart. Um, and uh, well, okay, so Allison's daughter had 900 volunteer hours. I think that's a little bit extra. I don't know how they found that much time, but that's what we're talking about. And that's probably why she got the scholarship. They give, um, they do an in-person interview and you have to show community leadership, grit, and a well-rounded personality. And then in addition to the full ride scholarship, your student also gets support from university reps and foundation staff. They get mentoring, alumni networking, and service opportunities. So this is, this is really a great program. Now, all the other scholarships. And again, I'm going to tell you that we worked really hard to make sure that these links all work and go to the right place. But if they don't, please just let us know and we'll fix that. Um, you want to think about, you know, is there some kind of a foundation or something for your child's diagnosis? Like the um, Epilepsy Foundation is on this list. Go to whatever diagnosis you have and see if there's a foundation or like the American Heart Association. Those places have scholarships or search just by, you know, scholarship for people with autism or deafness or um, 
bleeding disorder, you know, whatever, whatever it is, there are scholarships out there. Uh, there's different memorial scholarships and different things that people have set aside when they pass away. They want to give to charity. They want to make a charitable contribution. So they set up scholarships. There's even scholarships for kids whose siblings have a disability. You know, um, you might have heard about the scholarship that duct tape offers where the kids design a prom outfit out of duct tape, and you can enter to win a large scholarship from that. There's there's so many possibilities. But like I said, focus on the larger ones. Have your, I mean, our kids really have a story to tell about how they have overcome challenges to get to where they are. They, with guidance, can write a fantastic essay that talks about what they've accomplished despite being in a wheelchair or, um, you know, having autism or having spina bifida or whatever it is. They have to tell their story and they can get serious scholarships for this. So like I said, check out all of these things once you have time, which I know time is in short supply, but it's definitely worth it. Another thing that people don't think about, and uh, these, these two books will help uh, with this search, Colleges That Change Lives and The Fisk Guide to Colleges. But when it comes to schools and how much they cost and scholarships, many people think, oh, we're not even going to apply to anything that's not an in-state public school because it's going to be far too expensive. Um, and people kind of tend to just say, forget about private schools out of state as way too expensive. We can't afford that because on the surface, it looks like you can't when you look up, maybe you look online and you say, okay, this college, $50,000 a year, that's crazy. We can't do that. But private schools have a lot more scholarship money to give away and a lot fewer students to give it to. Whereas public schools have fewer scholarship dollars and way more students. So if you apply to a private school that may maybe is out of state, you might be more likely to get a scholarship that could lower the price to having the same price as a state in-state public school. Um, and then, you know, now you have the choice of, do I wanna to go to a private school or a public school? Well, a private school might offer, probably offers smaller class sizes, which might be better for your student. Um, Definitely something to think about. And not only do people not really realize that, another thing that people don't really think about is, you know, after you apply to a school and you apply for all your scholarships and all of that, you get an award letter from the school. And they're going to say something like, okay, we as the school will give you this amount of money and you can access a student loan for this amount of money. And as parents, you can access a government loan for this amount of money. And we're gonna give you a grant for this amount or whatever the case may be. Those award letters, uh, that money is negotiable. So what we did is we contacted the financial aid uh, advisor that we were working with at the school that my son ended up going to. And we said, you know, he has been offered a scholarship at your school and we are so thankful for your generous offer. He's also been offered a scholarship at this other school and it's making the prices quite comparable, but he would definitely prefer to go to your school. So if you could offer an extra $2,000 you know, that would really help our family and it would really seal the deal on getting my student to your school. Um, it worked. They gave us more money and that's where my son went. So those, those letters are negotiable. Just keep that in mind. 
I see that we still don't have any questions in the chat box or anything like that. So I'm going to keep going and it looks like we might uh, finish just a couple minutes early. Uh, these are other things that we talk about a lot and we help families with a lot. So keep these things on your radar. Check out our upcoming webinars for topics like these. Um, the special needs care plan, uh, figuring out future care cost estimates, you know, not just what it might cost right now for your child if, if maybe a partial residential community would be good for them or group housing. What is that stuff going to cost in the future when your child might need it? Not just now. Um, the Texas waivers, hopefully you're all on the interest, the waiting list for the waivers. And if you're not, you need to get on that ASAP. Uh, we can help understand your SSI and SSDI, how to apply when your child turns 18 and why you don't really need to worry about it until then. ABLE accounts, we've talked a lot about that today. We can help you get one of those set up. Beneficiary designations. Uh, it is very important that you do not have your child listed as a beneficiary on any of your assets or else it will cause your child to lose, um, it could cause your child to lose their benefits like SSI and Medicaid uh, because suddenly they'll have too much money. So. Any money that your child gets really should go either to the ABLE account or the third party special needs trust. There's also a first party special needs trust and the rules there are a little bit different. Uh, for example, uh, if child support is a situation in your life and you're, you're going to have child support continuing beyond age 18 because of the disability, you should have that child support money go to a first party special needs trust, or it will be counted as income for your child, and that could affect their benefits. Um, residential living communities, group homes, things like that, uh, even day programs, and um, they're calling that ISS now, um, individualized services and socialization, I think. Um, all of those great transition programs and campus programs, you want to tour early and check into those things early because the waiting lists can be quite long. We have a residential panel webinar coming up um, I, in March, early March, I think, but you'll be able to find that out. Um, guardianship and alternatives to guardianship, another thing that needs to be on your radar. You can start uh, the guardianship process when your child is within six months of their 18th birthday. Um, there's also power of attorney, healthcare power of attorney, like we've mentioned, supported decision, decision making. Those are options as well. And of course, post high school education options, which is this webinar. <laughs> Uh, when you get the slides, here we go, this link will take you to our website events tab where we have all of our upcoming webinars uh, laid out for you. You can register for them, figure out which ones you would like to attend. If you can't attend in person because they're normally between noon and one on weekdays, you could also go to our YouTube channel, which is linked on the last page of of my slides here, you can go to our YouTube channel and pull up webinars that we've done in the past, and you can check out any of our previously done web webinars as well. Here's our team, just to put some faces with the names I've been talking about. This is Allison and her husband, Jeff. They are the owners of the company. Then there's myself and my husband, Andy. We are advisors, and we have a fantastic group of uh, support team members who make sure that we um, stay in line. We get all the appointments scheduled and the marketing done and the paperwork and all of that stuff. So they, they really are the heart and soul of our operation, I think. We offer a free consultation to everyone who attends these webinars, everyone who registers for these webinars. You can go ahead and schedule your free consultation. During this time, what we do is answer as many questions as we possibly can. 
and then learn about you and your family and what you're going through, what you have in place already. And then we're going to talk to you about our company, how we work, what we charge, um, all of that kind of stuff. Now, I will tell you that part of our job, you know, those four sweet girls here at, well, and me and Andy, we make phone calls to all of the people who attend our webinars and we re reach out to try and see, first of all, do you have any additional questions that we can answer for you? And second of all, do you want to schedule your free consultation? If the answer is no, that's okay. Just please don't hang up on us. <laughs> that's all I ask. You can use the QR code to take you a uh, to schedule your own consultation, or you can call us at 281-690-1177 or email contact at cpgcares.net. Down here is all of our social media channels, our YouTube channel where all of those great webinars are, Instagram, Facebook, and our podcast in, in case you would like to listen to our webinar rather than watch it. So, I don't see any questions in the chat box. I uh, I guess I explained everything very thoroughly, but if you do have questions, like I said, you'll hear from us and we are here for you. Okay, so I hope you enjoy your week. Have a great, I hope you've taken away a few helpful nuggets today from this webinar. Uh, if you have questions or comments or concerns, you can reach out to us. You will receive an email later on today that has our contact information, these slides, and a link to our YouTube channel where this uh, webinar will be, uh, be able to be viewed. Okay. And once again, if you are listening on our podcast, you can email us contact at cpgcares.net to get a copy of the slides. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for being here and uh, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.